Good morning, people. It's Menenberg again, going into a little bit more detail on the 2020 DBQ rubric for the AP history exams. Again, that covers AP modern world history, AP European history, and AP US history. It's the same rubric, same points available. So I'm gonna go into some detail and explain what that looks like. In this video in particular, I'm gonna explore evidence points number four and five. In the previous one, I talked about evidence one through three. These are a little bit different here for evidence uh, four and five, but let me just show you what it looks like on the rubric released by the College Board. Hopefully you'll be able to see this and let's take a look here. OK, now as I pointed out in earlier videos, the thesis and contextualization points are identical and these points for evidence uh, four and five the scoring rules are the same as they used to be for evidence point number three, which says uh, uses at least one additional piece of specific historical evidence beyond that found in the documents relevant to the argument about the prompt. Now, it says you have to have a little bit, if you look to the right there, it has to have more than a phrase or reference. You can't just name drop, if you will, to get this point. You have to go into a little bit de detail, and it also has to be different from evidence used to earn the point for contextualization. I talked about that in the contextualization video. Essentially, what we're doing here is we are demonstrating that we have a good amount of historical knowledge. And when you have a prompt, whatever that DBQ prompt is, it's going to be about a topic and a place and a specific time, and you've studied that content, not necessarily that specific environment, but you have an idea of what's going on in the world, hopefully in that region um, at that time. And so you should be able to drop a little bit of that knowledge. This is where your content review and in preparation for the exam really comes into play. Now, if I was taking this exam, I would do this. And we're going to get into this in another video. For analysis and reasoning point number one and two, that's where you cap the documents or HIP or whatever your acronym is, you, you are going to have the option of examining the context around a specific document. That's the C or the H in the HIP. Um, and so if you do that and do it well, for multiple documents, that means more than the two that you get a, analysis and reasoning point number one and two for, you should, in fact, be able to get evidence points four and five right there because you're going to give specific details surrounding the context of that document. So like, let's just pick document three. You happen to recognize the, the time frame or, or the specific location and what's going on. And so you drop a little bit of uh, content knowledge in that surrounding uh, as part of your context. Now, a good example of this, we had an imperialism DBQ uh, and there was a document from um, Otto von Bismarck uh, who organized the Berlin Conference in the 1880s. And that evidence was not in the documents. It was a document that took place after the Berlin Conference, but it's totally related to the topic of the prompt because the Berlin Conference was certainly about imperialism. And so a lot of students popped in a little, you know, knowledge about how he organized that, how he was in Berlin and how they were doing this and carving up Africa and nobody from Africa was actually represented in the uh, conference itself. And that's specific, it's accurate, and it's evidence that is not found in the document. Again, you can't just name drop. You can't just say Berlin Conference. That's not enough. You have to talk about what it was, some of the people who were there, what they sought to, to do at this conference, and then that is how you are going to get evidence points number four and five. Now, as you noticed from the DBQ rubric for 2020, you actually have two opportunities to do this. You can very easily get two points just by you know, regurgitating a bunch of historic knowledge. Now, because this is open note, these points should be even more accessible than, than ever before because you can look up stuff very quickly. And again, you're not writing it word for word, but you can reword what you know. And uh, I would suggest doing context uh, for each document that you cap because it's, it's a good way to incorporate your content knowledge and possibly get evidence points number four and five. Uh, and again, remember, and we talked about this in the thesis video, your evidence for points four and five 
have to be tied to your thesis. Let's look at that wording one more time. It says it has to be relevant to your argument. So that means is you can't just pop in some random, even if it's accurate, historical you know, data. You can't just say, oh, Otto von Bismarck's favorite color was black. Well, he's related to imperialism, but his favorite color has absolutely no bearing on what we're talking about with the topic of imperialism or the Berlin Conference or anything related to that. So you have to make sure you're incorporating stuff that pertains to the topic and, and your argument specifically. So you have to have a thesis and you have to have relevant evidence. It's not that difficult, though. So I think these two points are definitely points every single one of you can accomplish. You just have to have that content knowledge and you have to have those materials accessible to you during the test if you draw a blank during the test itself. OK, people, next video will include analysis and reasoning one and analysis and reasoning two. I hope this is helpful. Keep subscribing and watching these videos. Share them with people you know. I'll talk to you soon.